sisters, I believe that there was no mass said um, in the uh, in this uh, period of time of vacations. So this would be some sort of our Christmas and even New Year's mass. So uh, uh, blessings for all of us, blessings for all of you on this beautiful year that the Lord is giving us, 2018. And let us also rejoice in the um, in the coming of Christ, in Christmas. Uh, the octave is about to finish, actually. You know, some people considered finished yesterday. Some people extended a little bit more until Epiphany. So at the end of Mass, uh, we will also have the, uh, the adoration or the, the, the veneration or whatever of the statue of, uh, of uh, little child Jesus to kiss. It's a beautiful tradition. And uh, so we can have a little, a little bit of a Christmas here too. Um, we read today in the, in the beautiful psalm, all the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. And um, the Old Testament, at some point, did have this expectation that the, uh, the first coming of Christ was going to be like his second coming as we believe it now, because it was revealed to us. You know, the Lord coming in power, the Messiah being a very powerful man that will actually defeat all his enemies with just a breath. We've seen that the plans of God have actually been different. So the first coming of Christ actually uh, was very humble. He was so humble that he let himself be crucified by us. So what can we do? We're, we're living in the last times of the church, the last days, which means the days that are to come or the days that have passed from the first coming into the, the second coming. And we live in a time where we have to live as Christ lived. Now, the, expecta the expectation was that all the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God in a very uh, extravagant or very, very miraculous or even powerful way. But Christ inaugurated a time of humility, a time of saving power indeed, but in a very human way. So, against all expectations, you know, the Lord became a man. And actually, in a couple of days, we're going to be celebrating the Epiphany, and we have the sign of the gifts of the of the, the three wise kings, or the Magi, whatever we call them. But um, the, the, the presents were gold, incense, and mirror. And uh, actually, there were prophecies that would put the gold uh, as a sign of the kingship of the Lord, incense, you know, uh, for his, uh, as a sign of his divine mission, at least. But there was no sign of prophecy concerning mirror, which, uh, which uh, as you know, it was uh, used to prepare and to uh, prepare the, the, the corpses after death. So there was not no indication in a way that he was going to die as he did. There was indication that he was going to suffer, as you know, in the, the canticle of the, of the servant in Isaiah. But uh, there was not um, uh, it was not clear that he was going to become a man and he did. So he inaugurated this humble time, this time of humility for us, meaning that the Lord cannot be found only in great and beautiful events but in our daily life, daily life in humility. The, actually, the coming of Christ to the Temple of Jerusalem, instead of having this magnificent entrance, he just came in, as we celebrated on Sunday, in humility with his beautiful mother and his um, uh, foster father, his adopted father, St. Joseph. And actually, Simeon, you know, recognized that. But this time, we have to live in humility. That means that hidden acts of sacrifice, hidden acts of charity, or normal and ordinary acts, actions 
are the ones that are to set the kingdom of God on this earth. And we come to Mass today and every day to ask for God's help so that we can have the help, the grace, the aid to be able to perform this. Because if we are not in the grace, if we're not in the grace of God, those could be good works, but they lack the the help, the merit they need to become divine and saving power. So let us say uh, ask for the Lord, the Lord's assistance to be able to give him this honor by asking his grace, participating, participating in his mystery, especially his humility mystery. The fact that God, being powerful, decided to become helpless, decided to need us and our daily life to settle the kingdom of God on this earth. We have the example of these great saints, the capital, two of the capital <coughs> fathers, St. Basil and St. Gregory Natchison. The other one is St. Gregory of Nisa, uh, the brother, the younger brother of St. Basil. But uh, they, in their time, they also, you know, they worked so that we would be living in a humble world, but nevertheless, with the power of the grace of God and be able to perform divine actions in our human condition. So let us ask the Lord today to give us this aid, to come to our aid, to us that work in the archdiocese and office, so that from this could be extended throughout the diocese, this saving example of this daily life as co-workers of the inner world. Thank you.